Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, I want to show you exactly how it is that you can get stock data right on your Excel spreadsheet, including historical stock financials, key metrics, growth metrics, dividend data, real-time stock price data, and more without the hassle and the pain of having to waste time copy-pasting this data for yourself. That being said, let's get to it. So we're gonna start with real-time stock data on your spreadsheet. So this is very simple. I've created a table right here of the data that I'm looking to get for various companies. So let's say those companies are Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, and Amazon. The cool thing is if you have Windows and an Excel uh, Office 365 account is that usually you're in home but if you go to the data tab, you will have this stocks uh, type. So what that's going to do is convert this cells to stocks. Once you have that done, the cool thing is that you will see this option here. And this will tell you all the data that's available. So I'm going to scroll from the top to the bottom so you can see all the data available. Feel free to pause the video at any time. And now with my table, I want to get very specific information. So we're going to start with the price, the PE, the market cap. And lastly, we want the volume. So that should be close to the bottom. And that's it. You'll be able to get your real time data right on your table as you want it. You can change the order any way you like. And the cool thing is that if you do want the data to be refreshed because the price and the PE ratio, market cap and volume do change very often, all you have to do is click on refresh all and you will see how the data will automatically refresh for you. Now, don't worry if you are on Mac or you have an Excel version where you don't have an Office 365 account, we will share a method that works for those situations as well. When it comes to getting the data for international stocks outside of the US, um, there's this guy that is going to be, there's going to be a link in the description. And basically the way it works is that here you can see all the different countries that are covered. So as you can see, the list of countries is very extensive. And now all you have to really know is this market identifier code. Once you know that, so for example, let's say we want to get a company from the Toronto Stock Exchange. All we have to do is identify the stock exchange for which that company is listed and that you can easily Google. So in this case is this and then enter colon and then the ticker of that particular company. So if we go back to our spreadsheet here, I can get data for TELUS, a big Canadian company, by using the code XTSE, and then the ticker, which is T, and you will see how the data will automatically update to that particular company. Now, if you don't have Excel stocks, like in this case, I have a Mac and as you can see, it's not available or you don't have an Office 365 subscription. Here's the alternative. So this tool is called Y Sheets and you can download it uh, right here from the add in store. Once you have it downloaded, you will be able to log in after you create uh, an account, which you can get for free on the company's website. And then after that, you will get access to this custom functions. So there's two of them, but the one that we're going to use first is the wise price function. The way it works is very simple. All you have to do in the function is enter the ticker or various tickers at the same time. So in this case, that's what I'm going to do. And then here you're going to enter the parameters or um, one parameter or a list of parameters. So in this case, I'm going to enter all of these parameters. And as you can see, you're going to be able to get all the stock data you need at once. The cool thing is that you can go here on the Y sheets add in, click on the Y price function menu, and then you can refresh the data as often as you like. So you can keep ref refreshing. And if you Google the stock price, you will see that it's actually accurate. If you're wondering what data and what parameters are available in the white price function, don't worry, we've written an article on it and that is going to be in the description as well. As you can see, these are the list of parameters that are currently covered. You can enter any of them in the function and you will see how you get the data instantly. 
The only thing that matters is that the spelling is the same, the spacing and the capitalization do not matter. You can do symbol in all caps, you can do symbol with the S uh, lowercase and it will work all the same. As for what exchanges are covered, this is again going to be in the description, but you can see all of the different exchanges that are covered, there's 50 plus exchanges available. And the thing to note here is the extension. So if you're looking to get data for this exchange, you're going to have to use this extension. So for example, if we go back to our example of Telos, the Canadian company, you can see here Toronto, TSX, the extension is .to. So all you have to do is you can just change one of these tickers. So we'll do the ticker T and then .to, which is the extension. And you will see how the data automatically updates for you. Now let's talk about how it is that you can get historical stock price data. This is very simple. All you have to do is again, enter a company ticker that you're looking to get data for. And in this case, let's say we want to get the close price between these dates. The thing to matter here is you have to make sure that the date are properly formatted. Um, you can use the formatting option as date here. After you do that, use the equal stock history function. Here you enter the stock and then you're going to enter the start date, which is right here, the end date. And then everything else here is going to be given to you. So the interval could be daily, weekly, or monthly. So I'm going to select uh, daily. You can just press tab. I recommend using the header so you know what data you're getting. So I'm going to say yes. And this is the interesting part here. It's going to ask you what properties do you want the function to show? So in this case, we want to see the date so that we can know when the close was. And then we also want to get the close. We could keep getting more and more properties following this format, but in this case, let's just keep it like that. So you close the bracket, press enter. And as you can see, you will get the data. So this is the header that we selected that we did want to include. And then in here, you can see for every date, what was the close price for Apple? Again, if you're looking for international stock exchanges, all you have to do is very simple. Enter the ticker with the extension that we talked about before, xdse.t. And you can see now how the data updates as well. If you're in Mac, don't worry. So right now, the wise price function does not have the ability to get historical stock price data, but that will be coming very soon via a free update. The benefit of using Y sheets with the wise price function or Excel with Excel stocks is that you can build models like this. So in this case, you have an Excel stock tracker, you enter your list of tickers, and then what it's going to do is it's going to give you the name, the price, and then based on the information you enter as uh, how much money you bought for that particular company and what your average cost was, it will tell you your current returns and the current value of your portfolio. As you can see, here is the wise price function being utilized to do this. If I click enter or refresh, you will see how the data will automatically update. And then using Excel graphs, you can more easily uh, visualize the data for yourself. Moving on, I will show you exactly how it is that you can get historical stock financials right on your Excel spreadsheet. This is one of my favorite things because it allows you to do your stock analysis very, very quickly. So all you have to do with Y sheets is go to the statement dump menu, enter any company of your liking, select annual data or quarterly data, and then standardized financials or SEC as reported financials. SEC as reported financials is in beta uh, and we recommend standardized financials because this allows you to compare the financial results with other companies more easily. Once you do this, then all you have to do is click on get data. And as you can see, what's going to happen is that you're going to get the company's income statement, the balance sheet, cash flow statement, key metrics, and growth metrics right on your spreadsheet with the data going back in this case to 2003. One cool little trick that I highly recommend that you try out is that you can go to any of the financial statements, click on this cell, click on insert so you get a new cell, and then what you're gonna do is this. You're gonna go on insert, 
and then you're gonna select spark lines column and then it's gonna ask you what data you want the spark line to show so we're gonna select this data right here click OK and what's gonna happen is that now you will get this cool sparkline uh, column so you can more easily visualize the trend of different particular items of the uh, financial statements so you can easily drag this across and now you can quickly see how is the revenue going how is the gross profit the net income the uh, depreciation and amortization it makes it a lot more easier to do your analysis this way to get all the information at once it could be quite helpful but sometimes it can be very overwhelming and not very uh, tailored to your use case so what happens if you want to compare the company's financials or key metrics of a particular company so i'm going to show you exactly how to do that you can pick any key metric any financial statement you like um, so you can just copy paste this put it into a brand new spreadsheet tab And then you're going to enter various companies so let's say apple microsoft tesla again if you want to do international stocks uh, all you have to do is enter the ticker and then the extension and then after that is very simple all you have to do is use the wise function you're going to enter the symbol the parameters and the period the period that is available um, includes LY so that gives you the latest year LQ that is the latest quarter TTM that gives you the trailing 12 months so in this case let's do TTM what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get all the data you need in one go for this particular company you can do F FN4 on Mac and F4 on Windows to do absolute locking of cells And what this is going to allow you to do is just drag the function and you will see how you get all the data at once for the different companies. If you happen to change the company, so now let's do Walmart, you will see how the data will automatically update for you. One important thing to uh, mention is that you can enter multiple parameters within the WISE function. So as you can see, I enter all these different years at once and what that's going to allow you to do is to get the p ratio for all these different years the cool thing is that once you put all this together you can build really cool financial analysis models like this one where you ask a specific data and you get it all at once for that particular company uh, so in this case this model includes real-time price data as well as historical key metrics and financials all in one place and then what happens is that uh, you can easily change the company ticker and as you can see you're gonna get all the data you need at once one last type of data that you can get and is very helpful with Y sheets is dividend data so one of the things that you can do is use the wise function select the symbol as the parameter you can do dividend yield and then what you can do is if you do TTM this is gonna give you the actual dividend yield as of this moment based on the last dividend payment that was made and the current stock price of the stock so this is apple's current dividend yield and the cool thing is if you want to see all the dividend payments that the company has made thus far you can also do that with the wise price function so you do wise price enter the symbol and then enter dividend as the parameter you will quickly see how this gives you the date, dividend, adjusted dividend, payment date, declaration date for this particular company. So you can see all this information, scroll down, do any calculations or any formulas you like. And that's it. That's how you get stock dividend data on your Excel spreadsheet. Altogether, using Excel stocks and Y sheets, you can build some cool models like this. So in this case, we have a DCF where you enter a company, do projections on different items of the financial statement. And as you can see, you will get in this case, the value of this company. Now, obviously this is just a mock example. This does not mean that this is the actual Apple uh, value. 
but you can see how powerful this is you can combine this plus some good excel skills and now all of a sudden you can take your stock investment analysis to the next level so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to give it a like and share it with anyone that may benefit we'll see you in the next one